So in this example, we've got waves coming in uh, from the sea and there's this wall with a couple of openings in it. Waves can only get through on these two openings. So we can basically treat each of these openings as a source. We're gonna have ripples spreading out from each of these openings. So waves spreading out from this opening as if that's the source and also waves spreading out from this opening as if that's a source. So what would we expect to happen each time we have crest and crest overlapping? Constructive in a sense. Yeah, crest and crest overlapping is gonna be constructive. Let me work that in a different color. So this is constructive, this is constructive. All these points where crest and crest overlap would be constructive interference. And this is not to scale, this is just a rough sketch. But also all the locations where trough and trough overlap would be constructive. So the in-between point and the in-between point overlapping, this would be constructive. And so would this and this and this and so on. All those in-between points. And then for destructive interference, destructive interference happens when what overlaps what? Trough overlaps crest. Yeah, so that's gonna be if we've got, for instance, this crest overlapping with this trough. So right here, we have destructive interference. And here, and here, and here. And so we're ultimately going to end up with this alternating pattern of bands of destructive interference and likewise here versus bands of constructive interference. This entire region is going to be constructed this entire region is going to be constructive and this region. So we get these alternating bands of constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive. And of course, what that's going to look like is the, these regions of water are going to be really choppy, very rapidly moving water. These other regions in between are going to be stripes of basically flat water. Of course, a diagram like this with looking at the wave fronts, the, the wave crests as they spread out, diagrams like this can be useful visualizations, but they get really, really cluttered, really difficult to interpret what's going on. And of course, they're kind of tedious to draw. So usually if we just care about at this location, what kind of interference are we doing? Instead of looking at the wave fronts, the, like the entire wave spreading out, we're just gonna look at ray tracing. We're gonna clear out the wave fronts and look at just the path taken by individual waves. For instance, you could have a wave traveling from, let's say, location one to location A, source one to destination A. And you could also have a wave traveling from source two to destination A. And this problem actually tells us how far those are. Those path lengths are, uh, dock A is 15.6 from opening one, so 15.6 meters and 21.4 meters from opening two. So we're told how far the wave has to travel to get from each opening to this location. Of course, we don't really care how far the wave travels. What's important is the difference between those, that these, these waves are not traveling the same distance. If they were traveling the same distance, we would assume that there's really no difference between them. But in this case, they're traveling different distances. And what's most important is the delta x, the difference in path length. And what is the difference between these? The difference between path one and path two? If we just subtract those, what do we get? 
Yeah, looks like 5.8 meters. And the thing we most care about here is not just in terms of meters, because meters is kind of arbitrary, but in terms of interference, we want to look at delta x in terms of how many wavelengths, how long that is in, in comparison to the wavelength. And this one, I don't think told us, I don't think it told us what the wavelength is, but it did tell us in this problem that the speed of the wave is 1.5 meters per second. It also tells us that uh, wave fronts are passing at one wave every 0.8 seconds. So that's the period of the wave, 0.8 seconds per crest, per wave. So that's the period. And using that information, how can we find wavelength? You use V equals lambda over T. Yeah, speed equals wavelength over period. So we can just multiply both sides by period and get wavelength equals speed times period. Multiply those together, one and a half times 0.8 and that is 1.2 meters. So that's the wavelength. The wavelength of this wave is 1.2 meters. And now we can figure out 5.8 in terms of comparison with 1.2. Specifically, what we really care about, in terms of interference, we care about whether the difference in path length is a whole number of cycles or something in a half cycles or something else entirely. Is 5.8 a whole number of wavelengths? No. Doesn't look like it. Because a whole number of wavelengths would be like, for instance, one lambda is 1.2 meters. Two lambda would be 2.4 meters. Three lambda would be 3.6 meters. 4 lambda would be 4.8 meters, 5 lambda would be 6 meters. And then we can keep going as far as we want. 6 lambda would be 7.2 meters and so on. Any of these as a value of difference in path length would lead to constructive interference. 5.8 is definitely not one of these whole number of wavelength values. So this is not constructive interference. Does that automatically mean it's destructive? No, because it could be partial. Right, destructive is very precise. Partial is just the catch-all term for anything that's not exactly constructive or exactly destructive. To be constructive, it would have to be a whole number of cycles. To be destructive, what would it have to be? A uh half. -huh. A multiple of a half. Right, and not just any multiple of a half, but odd multiples of a half. So something and a half. For instance, three is a multiple of a half. It's just six times one half. What's important is that it be an odd multiple of a half. So you have something and a half. So if you look at the in-between values, for instance, if you have 0.5 lambda, that'd be 0 0.6 meters or one and a half lambda would be halfway between those. So that would be 1.8 meters. Or two and a half lambda, halfway between these would be three meters. Or halfway between these, three and a half lambda would be 4.2 meters or four and a half lambda. Is that right? Yeah, 5.4 meters. So if it's any of these values as the difference in path length, how much further one wave is traveling than the other, then we would expect destructive interference. Is this on that list? No. Yeah, it doesn't look like it shows up on either one of these lists. Somewhere between 5.4 meters and six meters is the actual difference in path length. 
So since the 5.8 meters is not a whole number of wavelengths, and it's also not exactly something in a half wavelengths, it's not constructive and not destructive. It's somewhere in between. It is partial interference. We might be able to say that 5. I mean, 5.8 is a little bit closer to 6 than it is to 5.4. So that is going to be closer to constructive than to destructive. So it's going to be kind of big waves, but not as big as they would be if it was truly constructive. So I would just call that partial interference. It's going to be kind of big waves, but not as big as they could be. Is okay. there a way to get that without like writing every single like multiple of lambda or half? Uh, yeah, the way we could do that algebraically is by saying we're we want to check is delta x. I mean, generally, delta x is going to be something times lambda. Delta x is something times lambda. We want to know is that something a whole number, or is that something a whole number and a half, or is it somewhere in between? So, without checking all the options, how do we find what this multiplier is? How could you oh, we can just plug in delta x 5.8 and then lambda equals 1.2. And how do you that? actually solve for that blank spot though? Like before you even plug in any numbers, how do you isolate this unknown multiplier? Divide by lambda on both sides. This blank spot is just going to be delta x divided by lambda. So one way you can do this algebraically without actually writing out all the possibilities is just divide. Delta x divided by lambda, 5.8 divided by 1.2, and check is the result a whole number, or is the result exactly something and a half, or is the result something else entirely? So if we divide those, 5.8 divided by 1.2, I'm getting 4.83. So 4.83 lambda. Delta x is 4.83 lambda. That's not exactly a whole number of lambda. That's not exactly something in a half lambda. So I would classify that as partial interference. Any questions on that so far? In fact, it's often useful to think of these, de these delta x's not in terms of meters, but in terms of wavelengths. So I'm going to write delta x here as 4.83 lambda. 4.83 lambda, which means partial interference. Any other questions on location A? Then let's take a look at location B, because I think that also gives us uh, numbers for that. We've got a path from, locate, from uh, source one to dock B and from source two to dock B. So those distances are uh, 11.9 and 13.7. So what's the delta x there? What's the difference between 11.9 and 13.7? What were those the numbers? 11.9. Yeah. How far off are those? One point eight. Yeah, 1.8. And we want to rewrite that in the same way we did for A. We want to rewrite that as something lambda. So if 1.8 meters equals something times lambda, what would that something have to be here? How does the 1.8 compare to 1.2? Is it 
the yeah. delta x over delta over lambda. It happens to be exactly 1.5 lambda. So this, these two paths, these, these two waves as they travel, the longer path happens to be exactly one and a half wavelengths longer than the shorter path. And if that difference in path length is exactly one and a half wavelengths, what does that suggest? Destructive? Yeah, this is gonna be destructive because it's exactly something and a half cycles. And note that we're looking at just the path length difference here because that's the only difference. These two waves, as they come into the seawall, as they hit the, the holes here and pass through, the only difference between these waves is how far they travel. They're the exact same wave to start with. They're coming from the same source. They're, they're just these incoming waves that get split into two wavelets. So they come from the same source. They have the same period, same frequency, same wavelength. They even have the same phase shift. There's no difference in the phase shift because they're coming from the same source. Both of these holes create a crest at the same time, both create a trough at the same time. They're synchronized with each other. So the only difference we have to care about is the difference in path length. And we just have to look at that in terms of, is it a whole number of cycles offset or is it something in a half cycles offset or is it partial interference somewhere between those? Any questions on that so far? Do we always have to do like um, source two minus source one? Uh, you could subtract in either order, but you wanna be consistent about it throughout the entire problem. Okay. So if you're subtracting source two minus source one in one of the situations, you wanna make sure you're doing that throughout the entire problem. In fact, it's usually, I mean, in this case, because we're only looking at the path length difference, it doesn't really matter. But it becomes most important if you're comparing the path length difference to some other difference, like a phase shift difference. Then you wanna be very careful to make sure you're consistent about it the whole way through. And in general, it's a good habit to get into. In fact, you might wanna just write a reminder to yourself that all of the deltas are two minus one. And again, it could be two minus one or one minus two. Just make a note to yourself and be consistent about it. Ooh. Any other questions on that so far? So if this is destructive interference, what would you actually observe here? What would you see if you looked at the surface of the water at that location? Flat water, yeah, still water. It's gonna be flat. You're not gonna see any waves. At location A, you're gonna see the water going up and down somewhat, not as much as it could be, but this is gonna have some waves. This is gonna have no waves at all. It's just gonna be flat. Uh, as for location C, let's try drawing out the same sort of analysis. We draw waves from location one to location C and from location two to location C. And I think we've got uh, numbers for those as well. 16 meters from opening one and 12.4 meters from opening two. So if we take the difference, delta x, what would we get there? And again, we're subtracting two minus one. So 12.4 meters minus 16 meters. And what would we get? Negative 3.6. Yeah, negative 3.6 meters. And how would that convert to wavelengths? Negative three, or do you just say like three wavelengths? I would still write it as negative three, but negative three still counts as a whole number for purposes of interference. Uh, the, the positive or negative is basically just about which one is a longer distance. But the important thing is that's still a whole number of wavelengths worth of difference. That wave one is traveling a longer distance than wave two, and we found that the extra distance is exactly three wavelengths. Since the offset is exactly a whole number of wavelengths, what does that tell you about the interference? It's constructive. Yeah. This is gonna be constructive interference, meaning it's gonna be very large waves at that location. 
So location C is going to have very large waves. Location A is going to have medium waves and location B is going to have no waves at all. Any questions on that? And then part B suggests that we've got a shift in the wind and the wave fronts are no longer arriving at the same time. Uh, using the phase chart. Yeah, you could also write this out as a phase chart. Let's take a quick look at what the phase chart would actually look like here, because I think we're probably going to want to use one for part two anyway, or part B. The phase chart is going to be keeping track of everything in the total phase. So as, as, we, as we saw before, the total phase is just the stuff inside the sine function. So you got your two pi t over period. Although a more convenient way to write this, dividing by period is the same as multiplying by what? Frequency. Yeah, so I usually just write this as two pi times frequency times time, two pi f t minus two pi over lambda x plus phase shift equals total phase. Although what we actually care about is the difference. Sometimes the way we write this is draw a, an entire row for wave one, an entire row for wave two, and then another entire row for delta. But all we really care about is delta. So I usually just apply a delta to each one of these before we even start the chart. Two pi is a constant, so we can pull that out. So two pi, also time can be treated as a constant. Both waves are arriving at the dock at the same time. So we could treat time as a constant. I mean, not constant in the sense that it doesn't change, but constant in the sense that the two waves both arrive at the same time. And then we just have delta frequency minus two pi times delta x over lambda. plus delta phase shift equals delta total phase. So those are the deltas we care about. However, we can make some, some further assumptions here. In this particular case, because this is really a very general equation, if we make this more specific, what do we know about the frequency of wave one and the frequency of wave two? They're the same. Yeah, they're going to be the same. Both waves are ultimately coming from the same source, so they have the same frequency. So there's no difference, which means this entire first term is going to be zero. Also, what do we know about their wavelengths? Is that the same too? Yeah, wave one and wave two have the same wavelength. Again, because they're coming from the same source. So since wavelength is the same for both, we can pull it out of the delta. There's not really a delta wave or wavelength for wave one and wavelength for wave two. It's the same wavelength. So if we pull the lambda out of the delta, we just get negative two pi over lambda times delta x plus delta phase shift because there could be a difference in phase shift. In part A, there's no difference in phase shift because both of these sources, both of these holes in the wall, they're both creating crests at the same time. They're both creating troughs at the same time. Crest and crest, trough and trough, crest and crest, trough and trough. There's no difference in phase because they're in sync with each other. They're synchronized. <coughs> so these are really the only terms we need in the total phase chart. This term is usually only included if the frequencies are different. If you've got two, like for instance, two musical instruments playing different notes, then the frequencies are going to be different. So this delta frequency becomes very important. But if the two sources are creating waves with the same frequency, this term is going to be zero anyway. Any questions on that setup so far? <clears throat> So let's try drawing out the actual phase chart then. <clears throat> 
we're going to have a column for negative two pi over a wavelength times delta x. We're going to have a column for delta phase shift. We're going to have a column for delta total phase. And we're going to consider location A, location B, and location C. We already found that lambda is uh, 1.2 meters. So this, for instance, is going to be negative 2 pi over 1.2 meters times delta x, which we found was, what was that, 5.6, I think? Is that what we were looking at? 5.8. Thank you. And if you multiply that out, the 5.8 over 1.2 becomes 4.83 times 2 pi, negative 2 pi. So that's just going to be 9.67 ish. So negative 9.67 pi. And we're assuming no difference in phase shift. So negative 9.67 pi plus zero is still negative 9.67 pi. And then for B, we've got uh, 1.8 meters. So negative two pi over 1.2 meters, the wavelength, multiplied by 1.8 meters. 1.8 over 1.2 reduces to one and a half and one and a half times two pi would be three pi. So we get negative three pi. And what does three pi mean, by the way? If you, if you, you have an angle of three pi, what does three pi actually mean? Is it the same as adding pi? Uh, yeah, which means what? How much of a revolution is that? What would be one full cycle in radians? Two pi. Yeah, two pi is one full cycle. So what would three pi be? It'd be like half a cycle. Yeah, or since it's three pi, it's more than two pi, that would be one and a half cycles. So two pi is one full cycle, three pi would be one and a half cycles. And note that that corresponds to the one and a half wavelengths. All we're really doing here, if you take delta x and multiply by two pi over lambda, all you're really doing is converting the, different, the distance as a fraction of some wavelength into an angle as a same fraction of a revolution. The difference in path length is one and a half wavelengths, one and a half cycles worth of distance. This mathematical operation just converts it to one and a half revolutions worth of angle. So three pi literally just means one and a half cycles. Also, we're still assuming no difference in phase shift. So negative three pi plus zero is negative three pi. So the total difference in phase for location B is still just the same one and a half cycles. Any questions on that so far? And then location C, the difference in path length is negative 3.6 meters. So we fill that in, negative 2 pi over 1.2 meters times negative 3.6 meters. 3.6 over 1.2 reduces to just 3, and, or negative 3. And negative 3 times negative 2 pi would be 6 pi, plus 0 phase shift difference. So we get 6 pi. But what does 6 pi actually mean? How many revolutions? Three revolutions. Three. That is exactly three revolutions, which corresponds to three wavelengths. So what we're doing, once again, is converting the distance in terms of uh, how many wavelengths, how many cycles worth of distance. We're converting that into the same number of cycles worth of angle. And the important thing about converting it to angle is that it standardizes, standardizes it. 
the time term is gonna be measured in seconds. The distance term is measured in meters. The phase term, phase shift term is measured in radians. By multiplying by two pi over lambda or multiplying by two pi over period, we're converting everything to radians. We're standardizing all of these measurements into just some number of radians so we can actually add them together and compare the results. In this case, there is no difference in phase shift because we're assuming these two openings are oscillating in synchronization with each other. They're both creating crests at the same time, both creating troughs at the same time. So this, the phase difference is no difference at all. The only difference comes from the path length difference. So we could read this off as, well, this is one and a half cycles. That's destructive. This is a whole number of cycles. That's constructive. This is somewhere in between, so that's partial. You could also read that off from the radian measure. Six pi is a whole number of cycles. And how can you tell just from looking at this that it represents a whole number of cycles? An even? Yeah, an even multiple of pi in radians means a whole number of cycles. So that's constructive. This one, how can you tell from looking at it that it's destructive interference? It's odd. Right, it's an odd multiple of pi. And an odd multiple of pi, what does that tell you about the number of full cycles? It's half of a some it's number of cycles. It's halfway in between. So an even multiple of pi, and we can always write an even number as 2n. If we rearrange the 2n to write it as n times 2 pi, that's a whole number of cycles. Whereas if we write out an odd multiple of pi, mathematically, you can always write an odd number as 2n plus 1. So 2n plus 1 pi. If you split that up, specifically if you uh, split out the two, if you factor a two out of this, two n factor a two out of it, you get n, one, you pull a two out of that, you're left with one half. So an odd number times pi is equivalent to something and a half cycles. So this is why an odd number times pi results in destructive interference. Odd number times pi is equivalent to something and a half complete cycles. And something and a half cycles is destructive interference. But keep in mind, there's nothing really special about odd numbers versus even numbers here. It's just that the way we set up radian measure, an odd multiple of pi means something and a half cycles. An even multiple of pi means a whole number of cycles. And then 9.67 pi is neither of those. So it's just somewhere in between, it's partial interference. Any questions on that so far? And then part B adds in an extra change. It says the wave fronts are no longer parallel to the shore. So instead of uh, waves coming in like this and crests going through both at the same time and troughs going through both openings at the same time, we're now having waves coming in on some diagonal. So a crest hits location one, and then a little bit later hits location two. Specifically a wave front, let's say a crest reaches opening one, 0.4 seconds before that same crest reaches opening two. So we get a crest going through one, and then a little bit later, the same crest goes through opening two. And the delay is 0.4 seconds. But 0.4 seconds, that's how much of a period here. Right, that's exactly half a period. So opening two is now getting a half cycle delay. And we could treat that as a difference in time, a 0.4 seconds difference in time, but it actually works a lot better mathematically to treat it as a difference in phase shift because phase shift difference is talking about whether these sources are synchronized. The sources are not synchronized anymore. Instead of oscillating in sync with each other, they're now out of sync with each other. One of them creates a crest, and then later the other one creates a crest. 
they're out of sync by exactly half a cycle. And what's half a cycle in radian measure? Oh. Right, so we now have a phase shift difference of pi. So we can write this as delta phi equals pi. The sources are out of sync with each other by half a cycle. So in this new situation, we're going to fill in a phase difference, phase shift difference of an extra pi. And note that the delta x's don't change at all. We're still talking about the same locations that are still the same distances from the sources. So the distances don't change at all when we add in this extra phase shift. All we're changing is the delta little phi column. And now if we add these up, we've got negative 9.67 pi plus pi is negative 8.67 pi. What type of interference is that? Still partial? Yeah, that's still partial. It might be a little closer to constructive or a little closer to destructive than it was before, but it's still partial interference. Location B, it was negative three pi, that was destructive. We add pi to it and what do we get here? Negative two pi. Right. And what type of interference is that? Now it's constructed. Right, that now becomes constructed interference. And note that if we combine these, we've got something and a half cycles worth of distance plus an extra half cycle worth of phase difference. Something and a half cycles plus an extra half cycle is now a whole number of cycles. So if we look at just the path length distance or difference, we would expect destructive interference the extra half cycle from the phase difference, the fact that the sources are out of sync with each other, that changes destructive to constructive. And likewise, location C was constructive from the six pi, the, whole, the three whole cycles. But we add an extra half cycle, six pi plus pi would be what? Seven pi, so destructive. Right. Seven pi is destructive because that's an odd multiple of pi, which means something and a half cycles. Six pi would be three whole cycles, plus an extra half cycle is now three and a half cycles. We change a whole number of cycles to something and a half cycles. So now location C has no waves at all. Location B has very large waves and location A still has moderate waves. The half cycle delay, yeah, the, the problem specifically says that in, in part B, we're now adding in, uh, the waves are coming in so that opening one gets a crest 0.4 seconds before that same crest reaches opening two. The idea is the waves are coming in at a, at a diagonal instead of head on. And they're no longer parallel to the shore, they're coming in diagonally. If the delay was three fourths of a cycle, then yeah, the phase constant difference would be three pi over two. And in cases like that, if it's not exactly half a cycle, it becomes very important to know whether it's uh, positive three pi over two or negative three pi over two. So I think that would have to be given information. If it's just uh, a half a cycle though, it doesn't really matter if it's plus pi or minus pi. Because for instance, six pi plus pi takes you to seven pi. That's even changing to odd. If it was instead six pi minus pi, that would take you to five pi, but that's still even pi changing into odd pi. So if, if it's exactly half a cycle of difference, it doesn't matter whether it's plus or minus. Anything other than a half a cycle or a whole number of cycles, you gotta be very careful about whether it's plus or minus. And that should be given information. Any other questions on that so far? We could also look at this more conceptually, going back to the work we did before we set up the phase chart. Uh, at location C, we had three whole cycles, but we're adding half a cycle. So three cycles worth of distance plus half a cycle worth of phase 
three whole cycles plus an extra half cycle is going to be something and a half cycles. Or here, we've got one and a half cycles worth of distance plus a half cycle of phase. One and a half plus an extra half is two cycles. Two whole cycles would be what type of interference? Constructive. Yeah. The total difference is a whole number of cycles. So that's constructive. You've got one and a half cycles worth of distance difference, locational difference, plus half a cycle worth of phase difference for a total of a whole number of cycles. Likewise, here you've got a whole number of cycles worth of difference in distance plus an extra half cycle of phase difference, three and a half, that makes something and a half cycles in total. So the important thing is the total difference in phase, combining all of the different effects that could cause differences. And note that when we add half a cycle worth of phase, everything that was destructive becomes constructive and everything that was constructive becomes destructive. So this is a very important result of any time you're adding exactly half a phase worth of phase shift difference, exactly pi, exactly half a cycle. Half a cycle exactly will change everything that was constructive into destructive and everything that was destructive into constructive. It just reverses all of those exact locations. Any questions on that so far? All right, we can look at more examples next time. Uh, have a good weekend and feel free to email me if you have any specific examples you wanna try out. See you next time. You're welcome.